Hello, I got another uh, video for you today. It's going to be a little bit tough uh, for here on in because what I used to do is when I did a, a preaching video on YouTube, I would just go live. And it was easier for me because I have slow internet here to upload the videos. But I would just go live and then um, I would just, you know, when you're done being live, it takes like two minutes for it to actually process and finish and people can watch it immediately. But I... Uh, YouTube for some reason has changed their um, policy to where you have to have at least a thousand subscribers in order to stream live to be able to do that. So I'm going to start going back to, um, you know, just recording it and then uploading it manually. But whatever it takes, you know, as long as, as long as the gospel gets preached, that's all I care about. But today, as you can see, I'm talking about. I want to talk today about the Catholic Mass, about what they do. They take of the, um, they take of the the wafer, the uh, the piece of cracker, bread, whatever, and then they drink of the blood, and, uh, you know, uh, the wine, uh, you know, things like that. Now, it kind of makes you think of the uh, the communion and things like that. Now, I'm not against the act of the communion. Of course not. The communion is a great idea if you do communion at your church and stuff. That's an awesome idea. But uh, what I'm getting at is that they're making the Catholic Mass a work. It's like, in their thought, they're taking Jesus out of heaven and eating him. And they're drinking his actual blood it's in their mind, you know. And it's crazy. And we can see by the Bible that that's not possible. And the Bible tells us not to think like that, you know what I mean? Not to really have that belief and, um, and things. And it also shows that if you do not, and it says here, because I'm getting this from the Catholic websites. It says, if you deliberately and willingly miss Sunday Mass or a holy day of obligation without a proper excuse is a mortal sin. It's a mortal sin not doing the Catholic Mass. What in the world is that? The Catholic Mass is not mentioned in the Bible. No one says Mass. There's no Mass. All right, that's a, that's a man-made thing, you know. Again, the communion, which is in the Bible, at the Last Supper, that's completely different of what we're talking about here. If you want to do communion, that's great. That's a great idea. Now, I'm showing that this way, if you don't go to Mass, you commit a mortal sin, which means mortal means you're going to hell. So that's a lose your salvation kind of a gospel, a works gospel. And it says if there's a mortal sin you committed and it's unconfessed, you would actually go to hell if that sin is not went to the confessional and told a priest, forgive me for my sins, Father, and everything else. So we have to see what the Bible says about these things. I have quite a bit going on right here. So this is going to start with these two here. What it is, is they're taking Jesus apparently out of heaven and they're eating him, and then they're drinking his blood with, you know, I guess they're drinking wine or grape juice or whatever they're drinking. I've never been to a Catholic Mass, nor would I ever want to be. But what we can do here is this. Let's run over to, let me go ahead and write this down. My mother watches my YouTube videos. And uh, when I first started doing YouTube, I actually would write down the verses. And then after a while, for some reason, I stopped. And my mother told me to please write down the verses again. So she can follow along with her Bible. So I said, uh, no problem. So we're going to look at chapter uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10, verse 12, and verse 18 of Hebrews 10. And see what the Bible says about keep, keep uh, you know, having Jesus die for your sins all over again. This is what the Mass is. Okay, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10 says, by which... Uh, by which will we were sanctified through the suffering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. One time he suffered on the cross once. That's all that it took. He took away all the sins of the world one time. Just believe in what he did, have faith in the blood, and that's you're saved. Let's go to verse 12 now. It says, By this man, what man? Jesus. After he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down on the right hand of God. After he offered one sacrifice for sin forever, once. It's only need to be once. Verse 18, now we, see, uh, now we're remission of these, there is no more offering of sin. There's no more sin offerings. Not, not for anything. Whether it be the Jews still making blood sacrifices in the old day under the law with, uh, with livestock, whether it be like a sheep, a goat, things like that. That's done. And people going around have to redo this every time, every Sunday, to make sure they're good and saved, make sure their, their weekly sins are forgiven. That's done. Jesus died once for all, and that's it. You have to be careful here, you know. Just read what the Bible says. 
And be honest with you, in this day and age with the internet and things, you can literally just Google something and say, hey, I, I need to find this in the Bible. And you can type it in and just people did the work for you already. You can get the verses popped up without knowing, the, knowing anything about the Bible. And that's a great way to start learning. You know, but never take someone's word for it, what the Bible says. Always look it up for yourself. Now it says here, as we mentioned before, it says about the mortal sin. If you do not take part of Mass willingly, and you willingly don't go to Mass, it is a mortal sin. Now, mortal means, of course, you would go to hell, as I mentioned before. But uh, it says that if you unconfess, now you have, you're actually confessing a sin to a man, which uh, you would have to call father, apparently, which is pretty bad. And this is big with the Catholics. They'll say all oh, father and this and that. And I've never done that before. I'm not a Catholic nor have I ever been. Because I didn't really agree with it. Now if we look in Matthew. In the book of Matthew. Let me see here. Matthew chapter 23. And verse 9. We're going to see something what Jesus is saying. And this is very straightforward. The Bible for the most part is pretty straightforward. Matthew 23, 9. Matthew 23, 9 says, And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Very straightforward. Do not call a human being father for any reason ever. That is something that Jesus commanded directly. Do not do that. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 9. And the Catholic can make up any excuse why they want to be called father, or they, they call them that. No. That's a big no. Now, the Catholics also believe that if you do not do a water baptism, you can't get salvation. And a lot of places that are like that, like uh, the Church of Christ, uh, believes that you can't get the Holy Spirit until you get water baptized. Now, however, we're going to see rightly divide our Bible again. Because who is our apostle that we need to listen to today? Paul. Paul was our apostle because he said several times in the scriptures... Paul says, I am the apostle to the Gentiles, and I magnify my office. Okay, so I'm supposed to listen to him. Paul is getting his information directly from Jesus directly. Jesus is telling Paul what to say, and Paul is telling us. So let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17. And let's see what Paul says, if he says anything about a water baptism. Okay, 1 Corinthians 1, 17. Let's see. Is that right? 1 Corinthians 1, 17. There we go. Almost there. 1, 17 says, and Paul says this. He goes, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. He says, I didn't come here to baptize you in water. I come here to preach the gospel. And if you read the gospel, which we will get to, might as well get to it right now. Is of course, as we know, if you've seen any other of my videos, you'll know. Well, I should have just left that in there for most partially. Of course, you know that the gospel for to get saved by today is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. And then I'm going to read this to you. And I want you to notice something. Does this gospel in any, any way say water baptism? Let's see. Moreover, brother, and I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you received, and where you stand, by which also you, you, you are saved, if you keep a memory of what I preached to you, unless you are bleed in vain. Well, Paul's speaking of, of what he preached to us. He preached, I did not come here to water baptize. I come here to, I come here to preach the gospel. Okay. By which also you are saved, if you keep a memory of what I preached unto you, unless you are bleed in vain. Now, believe in vain means something you did, vanity. So if you even believe the gospel completely and still try to do works for salvation, whether it be mass, whether it be water baptism, uh, and whatever, or have to go and get a, you, you have to go and do confession with a human, those are all works. Anything you do for salvation is a work. The only thing you can actually do for salvation is just have faith. That's it. Faith, believe, trust. The same the three words mean the same thing. That's the only thing you can do to get saved in this day and age. There is no works, absolutely no works. Moving on, it says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, which I received, how Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day according to the Scriptures. Nowhere do I see water baptism in there. Actually, I also see you shouldn't do works in, 
in the gospel. The gospel mentions you shouldn't do works, which means unless you believe in vain. So we need to be careful. There's no works involved. Don't do anything. And it's it, people. It, the Lord made this so easy. People are screwing it up. I mean, literally. And the, a lot of the, every Catholic. I actually I talked to one today that was really just really. I I, I just was surprised this old woman was so angry. But I don't know. She she was pretty adamant that she's going to heaven. Now, however, Catholics believe that they do not know that they're saved until they die. Again, some Catholics believe differently from other Catholics. Their church might teach them differently. That's why it's not always 100% accurate when I'm teaching about these things. But on average, a Catholic, even a priest, will say, I'm not sure if I'm saved until I die to make sure if I did enough works or not. Because Catholic is full-blown works gospel. But if we look here, you'll know you're saved for one reason. If you look in, let me kind of write it down. If we if we look here in Ephesians, chapter two. Oh, oh here we go. Ephesians, chapter two. And it's verses eight through nine. Paul speaking again. Let's see if I can find this real quick. Here we go. Ephesians chapter two, eight and nine. It says. For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not, not, uh, not of works, lest that any man should boast. Not of works, no works. For by grace you are saved through faith, that not of yourselves. What does it mean, not of yourselves? It goes back to the, to the vain. If you, if you believed in vain, like it says in the, in the gospel. Of 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, actually it's, uh, 15, 1 through 4, right? I think it's verse 2, but I think it's verse 3. Yeah, verse 2. And um, saying, not of works, that's any, any man should boast. So two verses are telling you, you can't do anything for salvation, but believe, trust, have faith in the blood of Christ. Trust that Jesus was that final sacrifice for all sin. If you want to trust in a work, definitely trust in the work of what Jesus did for you. Trust in Jesus' finished work on the cross. That's the work you trust in. Amen? So we have to know that. So you know right there. You, you have to be careful because if you start using all this here and it turns into a works. If you, Because the first thing this lady said today was, I do mass every week. I'm like, well, that's a work. And she just started getting upset. And I'm like, oh, never mind. And I just kind of got away from her. You know. And, it's, and, uh, and things like that. So... It comes into that. And in, in getting back to my point, uh, I wanted to make sure and mention about the no works thing for salvation. The Bible says don't do any works for salvation. However, after you're saved, then you can serve and uh, build up your treasures in heaven. Salvation and service are two very different things. Now, um, I'm not sure you're saved. Let's look at, um, uh, let me see, I'm, I have a really good one planned out here. Yes, let's look at Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. And Ephesians 1, 13 says, right here, In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that ye believed, and you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And it's showing you right here in Ephesians, Ephesians 1, 13. At the moment you got saved, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. When things are sealed, it's finished. You can't lose your salvation and things like that. It just doesn't matter. i got some verses showing that as well. And actually, the belief of losing your salvation anyway is a worse gospel in and of itself. It's not possible. It's not biblical. Now, I want to move on here to something else. It's something else is called uh, Sacrament of the Confirmation. Now, there's, I believe there's seven sacraments. And one of the sacraments is uh, uh, Confirmation. Is the only way to be sealed with the Holy Spirit in the Catholic Church. It's really interesting. Now, of course, as we mentioned, Ephesians 1.13, again, we see sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You're sealed at the time of salvation. Let me read it again. Uh, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in which also, after that, ye, ye believed, you were then sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Once the time, once you believe, you're immediately sealed. You don't have to wait for a sacrament. It sounds to me like I don't, like I said, I don't know. I know some Catholics, and uh, 
but I've never really went to Catholic church before. I think I went like once or twice years and years ago, like 20 years ago or something, just to go. And I really didn't like it then either. But um, as I learn more about it, the more I'm just getting, not to be mean to anybody, I'm just getting kind of disgusted. Like, this is, seriously, they believe this? They also believe that the uh, sacrament of confirmation, uh, you have to, you have a name. You're given the name of a biblical person or a Catholic saint, which is crazy. Uh, a biblical person, you know, a Catholic saint, and it's, uh, it's for uh, the securing and additionally uh, patron saint as a protector and guide. I don't know where that came from. A lot of people believe that people have guardian angels, and that's really not biblical that I can find. Maybe there are. I don't know. But that sounds like a Catholic thing. I'm, again, I'm not saying there is or there isn't guardian angels. I've just not found that in the Bible. But I do believe, you know, there's always, there's a, this is a very spiritual world, I do believe. But I think that we're not able to see it because I believe the Holy Spirit uh, uh, protects us from all these horrible things that are going on in the world. That's what the Bible says in many places. You know, but you're, you're supposed to be um, additionally a patron saint as a protector or guide. Well, okay, a saint, uh, a Catholic saint is not anything. Uh, I think that they just kind of make that up or, or they vote on who a saint is, which is complete foolishness. Um, also, someone is a, a patron, like someone is a, someone, a biblical person, they'll be following them. Now, we do see in the Bible that when you go and you die, like you you were in the, you were a Bible put someone in the Bible and you died, you can't come back here. There's only been a few ever instances where that was possible. One was uh, one was Samuel. Samuel actually got conjured up by Saul by the uh, by the witch of Endor in the Bible, and um, Saul was climbing up out of Abraham's bosom here at Paradise Hades. Because this is in the time before Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection, so all the people that are good, all the Old Testament saints at that time, were still down in the ground. They weren't in hell, they were beside of it, in a paradise. And that's where Samuel was. And Samuel got called up, because uh, Saul was asking him his advice, what do I do? And Samuel wasn't too happy about it. Also, uh, Elijah and Moses had appeared to Jesus during the transfiguration. Uh, at that time. Now, I do believe uh, Moses and uh, Elijah will come back in tribulation. I believe they're going to be the two witnesses in tribulation. I very much believe that as well. Now, that happened. But those are for specific reasons. People just don't come back. I don't believe in ghosts or any of that garbage. I do sadly believe that uh, people can have a haunted house. That can be demonic. Uh, things like that. People can accidentally conjure up demons. I don't think it's too accidental. People play with Ouija boards and witchcraft and things like that which is a horrible thing. I do have a video on that. Please watch that video if you get a chance. The horribleness and the dangerousness of all those horrible things. People walking around with their cameras and ghost hunting and things. What a foolish thing to do. That's a, that's, that's, it's not a good thing to do. But um, See, they're talking about people that were, had died and came back. Well, we can check this out. We can look in, uh, in the book of Luke. We can look in Luke in chapter, excuse me, verse, or, yeah, verse, Chapter 16. Now we hear, I've actually did a video on this. If you ever get the chance, go back this, to the video on this channel. I actually do a video on this. Now Jesus is speaking, and a lot of people are mistaken. A lot of people that Jesus is telling a parable. When Jesus would tell a parable, he said, here is a parable or an illustration. Jesus is not doing a parable here. This is actual events that actually happened. And it's talking about the rich man and Lazarus. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because I did a video on it before. If you definitely check it out if you want to know more about where you go when you die and things like that. It's talking about how the, uh, the rich man was really just a bad guy. He was just all proud. And the poor man was just poor and he just, you know, was sat, sat by the city gate and just, you know, begging for money. was starving and things like that. And we'll start here and it says, uh, it said, it came to pass, the beggar died. It was carried by the angel into Abraham's bosom. Now in the old times, in the Old Testament... People died, good people, uh, like the Old Testament saints, whether it be uh, Samuel, of course, uh, uh, King David, uh, Daniel, and all those guys. Except for a few, of course, uh, Moses and uh, Elijah, they went to heaven. It was, they have a, there was a different thing. God has a different plan for them. They actually didn't go there uh, and things like that. But everybody else did. 
And then they went down there, and then when Jesus was resurrected, he actually took the Old Testament saints up to heaven with him. So about 2,000 years almost now, they've been in heaven. But back then, here's what it did. And here's also what happens when you die and you're not saved. It says, uh, And it came to pass the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, the rich man, in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment and seeing uh, see Abraham far off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, Lazarus was the poor man, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. He's in hell, suffering for his sins. But Abraham said, now here's what we need to get to here. Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in my lifetime receiveth thy good things, that thou in your lifetime. And likewise Lazarus, evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And, begin, uh, and begins all this. Between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, and that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Okay. And then he said, I pray therefore, Father, that thou wilt send me to my brother's house. For I have five brothers, and that he may testify unto them, lest they also come unto this place of torment. And here's what's interesting. And Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nigh, Father Abraham, but if one went out to them from the dead, they would repent. And he said, Abraham said unto him, If thy hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, uh, though one rose from the dead. Who's going to rise from the dead? Jesus. People still don't believe Jesus today. It's horrible. But the whole, but what we're getting at here is they're saying that people can come back from the dead. Whether you went to hell or whether you went to heaven, you cannot come back to this earth. Of course, as I said, there's a few exceptions, which I mentioned. Other than that, it's not allowed. So how in the world can the Catholics say that all this is a biblical person or a Catholic saint that's always guiding and protecting me? The Bible said it's not possible. People cannot come back from the dead. It's not possible. Now, there will come a time when everybody comes out of the dead, and that's not this, it's not at the time yet. There will be judgments. Saved will be the judgment seat of Christ. Those that were not saved come out of hell and take uh, part of the judgment seat of Christ. Two different judgments a thousand years apart. So we have to understand, the Bible says you can't have this happen. You can't have a dead person that's your guide or your protector. A dead person, it's not possible. So we're seeing a lot of these beliefs. This is just the, the beliefs within the Catholic Mass. And again, people that are under different churches and uh, of the Catholic churches, they all have different beliefs anyway. They all kind of, seems like every church has a different belief you know, here and there. And now, what I want to do before I close, I want to talk about eternal security. I believe what, what the Bible says, and the Bible says you cannot lose your salvation once you are saved. However, you can lose rewards in heaven. Say if you get saved and then you go back into your sinful life, you're still saved. But you can lose your rewards in heaven. Now your rewards in heaven, as far as I understand, it, it it's actually something that will affect you eternally. Nothing bad. You won't be in torment or pain or nothing. But, you know, it's better to build up your treasures, treasures now when you're alive here. Okay, let's go ahead and look at Romans. Okay. Romans chapter 8 and verses 38 through 39. And you see what Paul has to say. All these verses we're going to talk about, four verses all together, or six or so, and Paul is going to be talking through all those. Now let's look at Romans 8. Romans 8, 38 and 39 says this about salvation. For I, uh, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor uh, uh, principalities, nor powers, nor things present, uh, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the, from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Nothing can separate you from God once you're there. And the Bible shows, if, I did a previous video about this, but it, the Bible shows if you are not saved, you are not with God. You're actually, God hates you if you're not saved. That sounds pretty harsh, but that's what the Bible says. If you're not with God, then you're against God. So it's better to get saved. Let's look in 1 Corinthians then. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 
21 and 22. Let's, talk, let's see what it says more about eternal security. Can you lose your salvation? 21 and 22, For after this is the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching uh, to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after knowledge. Because that comes into that with the water baptism and things. Well, that's a good verse too. I actually meant 2 Corinthians. There we go. My bad there. 2 Corinthians. Here we go. And here we go. 2 Corinthians 1, 22 and 20, uh, 21 and 22 says, Now he which established us with you in Christ and has anointed us in God, who has also sealed us and given us, given the earnestness of the spirit of our hearts. Again, just like it says in first, uh, first uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, it says we've been sealed with the Holy Spirit. You can't break a seal. You cannot break the seal of the Holy Spirit. Let's look again. In, uh, okay, let's see. Let's look in Philippians here. Man, I'm a little happy with this uh, marker. Philippians, we'll look at uh, 1 6 there. There we go. Philippians 1 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. What's the day of Christ? The rapture. It says in 5, uh, For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident in this very thing that we, which has begun a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Till the day you're, you are, your body is redeemed at the time of rapture, or if you die uh, before rapture, you just go to Jesus if you're saved. Uh, you, you go to heaven if you're saved before the rapture. But at the rapture, uh, you would actually uh, go to the Lord and just be removed from here, which is a day I look forward to very much. But... We need to understand is that Catholic religion is not lining up with the Bible. I'd be honest with you. I do believe the Catholic religion does a lot of things opposite of the Bible. I mean, the Catholic religion was founded by Constantine in 325 AD, which was actually a pagan that was used to go around and kill Christians. This is not a joke. This is literally historical fact. And their whole understanding is false. They're giving you a complete works gospel. Too many religions are in works gospels. They're telling you cannot get sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until you take a sacrament of confirmation, which is foolishness. The Bible shows that you get sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise the moment you get saved. Just It goes back to people that are in these Catholic churches. They're not reading their Bibles. It's very scary. And there's a lot, speaking of scary when it comes to the Catholic religion, something interesting about that let me see here if i can find this real quick um i definitely want to mention this okay let me go ahead and write this down real quick i want to mention this because uh i actually mentioned it before and the catholics really get upset when you mention this i'm not trying to upset anybody i'm just showing them what the bible says about these situations okay if you get the chance I, I, I urge you to please read the entire chapter of Revelation, chapter 17. I'm going to skip down for time, because I'm in this in about 30 minutes now. And it says, uh, let's say, now at this time, I'll just set it up for you. Uh, John was actually in a vision to write Revelation. And in the vision, he saw future events, what will happen in tribulation, and what actually will happen uh, in the Millennial Kingdom, and things. So we're going to start here in verse 4 of chapter 17. It says, uh, let's see here. Let's actually do this. Let's uh, chart, start in uh, verse 3 of chapter 17. Uh, so he, John, was carried away in the spirit unto the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon the scarlet colored beast. What's scarlet? Scarlet is red. Uh, let's see. Colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed with purple and scarlet color. Purple, purple, of course. 
purple used to be the symbol of royalty because purple up until about 150, 200 years ago, purple was hard to get and hard to make, so purple was expensive, so purple was a sign of royalty in a lot of nations. Let me keep reading again. And the purple was arrayed with, uh, in the, the moon was arrayed with purple and scarlet color. Scarlet is red and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Chapter 6, excuse me, verse 6. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints. Who were the saints? The saints are not the Catholic saints. The saints are the people that were that were killed throughout history. Who killed the apostles? Rome. Who killed Jesus? Technically, Rome physically did it, but God holds the Jews accountable, as the Bible says. But physically, who did it was Rome. Rome is the one that would be drunk with the wine, the, uh, drunk uh, of the blood of the saints. Rome. Who is Rome? Catholics. Now let's keep going here in uh, verse, in verse six again. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs for of Jesus. Who's the martyrs of Jesus? Those that will die in tribulation. They have to accept Jesus and take off their head, and refuse the mark of the beast in tribulation. Those are the martyrs we're talking about right here. And and when I saw her, I would wonder with great admiration. Now when when John saw her, he was like amazed, like wow, this is amazing. Was this is awesome? And then an angel stopped him, and it says, And the angel said unto me, Where dost thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which has the seven heads and ten horns. In verse 8, The beast that thou sawest was and is and now it is and not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wander. Whose name were written? Whose name were, were written in the book of life from the foundation of the world? Excuse me. Whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world? When they beheld the beast that was and is not and yet is. Now get ready for verse nine. Verse nine, chapter seventeen of Revelation. And there is the mist which which have wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Who? Who has seven mountains? I know that there's more than seven, there's areas with more than seven mountains or seven hills. However, adorned with uh, uh, purple and scarlet, who does that? The Pope. Who's wearing these things? Cardinals. Well, cardinals were red, of course. The Pope and, and, and everything else. So, it's interesting how this could only be Rome. And who sits on seven hills? The Vatican. The Vatican sits on seven hills. The whore of Babylon, in my opinion, is a religion. It is not a country. Well, technically it is. I think Vatican City is actually its own country. But if we, if we really study this, we will see that there's a very, very, very good possibility that the, that, that the whore of Babylon in Revelation is actually the Catholic Church. I'm actually convinced of it, and I actually preach it doctrinally that that's what it is. There's nothing in the Bible that could find I could find any different. We have to be careful. Again, I've mentioned before, this is another way how we should read the Bible. What's it say here? I believe in verse 9 again. In Revelation 17, verse 9. And an angel was talking to John and says, And here is the mind which has wisdom. Who's he talking about? People that have wisdom. People that are knowledge of Scripture are the people that have wisdom that can figure this out. Studying your Bible is so important. Just don't read it. Yes, read your Bible, but do more than read it. Study it. Learn about it. Find information. It's so wonderful to read Scripture. And again, as I said before, the Catholic religion is another trap of the devil. And I'm, I'm trying not to be harsh here, but I've got to be straightforward. Because when it comes down to it, if you would read your Bible, you would see quickly all these faults within the Catholic Church or faults in all these other cult religions and immediately know from knowledge of already having read the Bible, like, wait, that's not right. This isn't right. Before somebody falls into it and they start giving you all these lies, so you start believing it. And you're like, well, I'm with Jesus because I eat of his body and drink of his blood every week to make sure that... All my sins are all renewed and forgiven again, all over again, every Sunday. 
That's not how it works, as we showed the Bible. I'm not going to sit here and say, well, the Catholic Church is wrong this way and that, and not tell you why. I'm backing up with Scripture. That's, this is what the Bible says, not what I say. The Bible says that I agree with the Bible, the King James Version of the Bible. We have to be careful of cults. We have to be careful of foolishness. Someone's going to be in the Catholic religion, and they're going to follow that mass, and they're going to follow this, and they're going to follow a works gospel, and they're going to go straight to hell when they die. Or they can be alive during tribulation, and they'll get the mark of the beast because they won't know any better. And then they'll see Jesus coming out of the sky in Armageddon, and Jesus will throw them into hell personally. This is what this is what the Bible says. I'm not making up anything. I'm not giving you my personal opinion on anything. This is what the Bible says. I don't hate anyone. I love everyone. And I desperately want people to get out of the Catholic Church, out of these false churches, and to come to the Bible, which is the Word, which is Jesus. Come to Christ. Christ is the actual only way of salvation through His precious blood. Otherwise, you cannot be saved. You can believe in the, in the gospel and get it and understand it, but still go out and try to do a work for your salvation. That will make your gospel no effect. Because Jesus' blood finished it all. Yeah, trust in the works of Jesus, not your own. Nothing you can do can save you. Actually, anything you can do for salvation will damn you and throw you into hell. Be careful, friends. God bless.